Wake up, wake up, wake up. Up you wake, up you wake, up you wake, up you wake. Do little, more like poo little, more like do do little. Okay, I'm not funny, I'm sorry. I can't even tell you what this movie was about. When the movie started, I noticed that a rat or something got shot with an actual bullet, but not only did it survive, by the end of the movie it was fine, and it took like what, a little while to heal? I don't know. This movie was really bad, and not in a fun way either. I don't get like the actual character of Doolittle. Like, why is he with all these animals in the first place? The man needs them to get dressed in the morning? He's what, like 50 plus years old? Why does he need the animal slaves to get him dressed? Or ride them around? Or get them to do his bidding? Did stuff like this happen in Black Doolittle? I don't remember. I haven't watched those movies in years. It is super weird. Doolittle also comes off as a little insane in this movie. You'll know when you see it. He just feels like an insane person that needs to go to Arkham Asylum. Dr. Doolittle also shoved his hand up a dragon's ass. He pulled something out of it, but to be honest, I forgot what it was. Sam, put on the screen what it was right here, please, because I really need to remember what it was. Is that armor? But yeah, he took this out of the dragon's butthole. It was fucking weird, yo. Throughout the film, I noticed a lot of weird editing choices, and a lot of weird ADR that you could tell was added last minute to fill a quota or something. But despite reports of the film not being completed, it did have a definitive ending, and did end somewhat nicely. The CGI was noticeably average. Like, if this movie came out in, say, 2010, I would have said, wow, these animals actually look good. But since we have seen multiple films with CGI animals, I was like, whatever. <laughs> Do Little, more like Do Do, am I right? Do Little is the latest film by Stephen Gagan, the director of Syriana and Gold. I haven't seen those movies, but they both kind of came and went. But he's gotten most of his credibility as a writer, known for writing the Oscar-winning Traffic, directed by Steven Soderbergh, and a Call of Duty game. No, not this one. Or this one. This one. Yep. I'm not even gonna mince words here. I'm astonished this film even got made in the first place. Funding a CGI heavy adventure movie directed by someone who hasn't done anything remotely this big, who also happens to not be the most consistently acclaimed writer-director, was definitely a bold choice to make. A choice which does not pay off at all because Doolittle is terrible. The VFX and production design are equally unconvincing. Because of this, I had a problem getting invested in the movie on a basic level, so all I was left with was the story and the performances, and both of those things left me high and dry. The story is so fucking bland. As soon as the movie starts, you know exactly how it's going to end. It's very cookie cutter. There's no nuance or moments where you think maybe this movie will provide something new. It's very upsetting sitting in a movie theater where two minutes in you know exactly where the movie is going to go, yet the entire movie is still ahead of you. It was frustrating, but since the movie was incredibly boring, it lulled me to sleep many times. Besides the fact that it's boring, there are aspects of the character Dr. Doolittle that make very little sense. Okay, so your wife died, and you shut yourself out from people, even though the animals you are emotionally invested in have less than and or equal life expectancies to humans at the time. Like, what? You're... You're setting yourself up for an immense amount of extra grief. You've dedicated your entire lives to these animals, and they're all gonna die probably faster than your wife did. Like, why not just shut out everything? It's just a very strange thing to do, in my opinion. Like I said, the performances also left me high and dry. Robert Downey Jr.'s performance at first is quite fascinating because his accent is so hammy and terrible, but the film is not like Cats, where the bad parts transcend its badness to become enjoyable. It's all bad here. The child performances are ass. This movie wastes the uber-talented Jessie Buckley, who was incredible in Wild Rose. Her performance in that film is incredible and it brought me to tears so many times. And in this film, she sleeps for almost the entirety of the movie. Like, you have a perfectly great actress here, but she's in this role where her eyes are closed and she's not doing anything. Great. Amazing. And even in the scene that she does have where she's awake, it's not even, like, good. <laughs> the celebrity voice actors don't have a whole lot to do either, and they're all completely wasted. The only part I liked was the animation at the beginning of the film, and if that was the movie, it probably would have been an okay time, but it wasn't. It was just all terrible. In conclusion, there was a message throughout the film of how to deal with grief, and I don't think it was fully explored, but it was explored enough, I guess. It is very lackluster, it isn't fun, and not worth the price of admission. Watch it when it's eventually on cable television, but as of right now, it will probably be forgotten in a matter of weeks. I'm giving Doolittle a 3 out of 10. And I'm giving Doolittle a 2 out of 10. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you agreed or disagreed, tell us in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already, and share with your friends and do all the things. Okay, love you, bye bye The Matrix video is happening, I swear to god it's happening. <laughs>